There are many different ways to design and build a vaulted ceiling, but there's only a few ways to get it right. There seems to be a lot of confusion around insulating vaulted ceilings, especially when the rafters are being exposed as a design feature. Do we vent them? Should we design them as unvented assemblies? Some people even suggest that the space can't be insulated at all, and that you'll have to live with a cold, energy, inefficient home, but that's actually furthest from the truth. Let's start with the basics. Vaulted ceilings can be successfully designed as vented or unvented assemblies, but unvented or conditioned roof assemblies are the simplest way to address these conditions without sacrificing efficiency or performance, and if you're exposing the rafters as a design feature, this strategy is required. Insulating a conditioned roof with a vaulted ceiling is actually fairly simple from a physics and building science perspective. Install the insulation outboard of the sheathing to prevent condensation using rigid insulation products like polyisocyanurate, EPS or XPS foam, rigid mineral wool or wood fiber insulation, and stagger and offset the joints to prevent heat loss at the seams. Provide a continuous air barrier between the sheathing and the rigid insulation. Provide a high quality water control layer, this would be the roof underlayment, and select a roof covering that will last a long time. Insulating entirely on the exterior of the structure is the best possible way you could insulate a building. It keeps the interior environmental conditions consistent and easy to control, and keeps expansion and contraction of the interior finishes and wood structural components at a minimum. It entirely eliminates thermal bridging through the rafters and other structural components. It prevents condensation problems that we're often concerned about in colder climates. It prevents pipes from potentially freezing, which is a big deal if you have a sprinkler system installed. It allows for easy maintenance and access to mechanical electrical, and plumbing services, as we won't have to violate the integrity of the air barrier and we won't have to remove any insulation. It allows for a continuous blanket of insulation from the roof to the walls to the floors with minimal breaks in the system, similar to one big jacket around the building. So what's the problem with this strategy? Well, it's expensive. However, you don't need to install all of the insulation outboard. You can have a hybrid roof in which we use a combination of rigid insulation outboard and a more affordable cavity insulation. Now, the amount of rigid insulation that you'll need is dictated by the climate that you're building in. Colder climates require a higher ratio of rigid insulation to be installed outboard, whereas temperate and warm climates require a substantially smaller ratio, as the condensation risk is much lower. What if you still want the look of exposed rafters? Easy, use a boxed beam instead. That's right, decorative rafters that are made to look structural. Well, what if you don't want to use rigid insulation? It's going to be harder, but you've got a few options at your disposal. By far the most affordable strategy is to install an airtight, smart vapor retarder membrane at the ceiling plane to provide an air barrier and a vapor retarder to prevent condensation on the backside of the roof sheathing, while allowing any moisture that happens to accumulate in the cavity to dry inwards. Now of course the challenge is making sure that the installers tape and seal every single penetration and discontinuity. The benefit of this strategy is that we can use any fibrous air and vapor permeable insulation of our choosing in isolation, whether it's fiberglass, mineral wool, wood fiber, cellulose, sheep's wool, you name it. But workmanship has to be a priority. Another strategy that's commonly used is to spray closed cell foam on the underside of the sheathing to provide the benefits of an air barrier and a vapor retarder with a high R-value insulation, preventing condensation if the foam is properly installed. It allows for a fast and easy application process, and it can also be used in combination with other insulation materials like mineral wool bats and netted blown-in insulation as part of a hybrid roof. However, we can run into several issues with spray foam in this type of application. The first issue is off-gassing chemicals, specifically the blowing agents used in the mixture. These off-gassing chemicals can generate odors, but they can also be odorless, some of which are respiratory irritants that can be harmful to those with respiratory conditions like asthma and can continue to off-gas for months after the initial installation. The second issue with closed cell spray foam is that it's relatively rigid and can crack if there's building movement. Wood buildings tend to move a lot, as wood naturally expands and contracts with changes in moisture content and thermal cycling. If the wood shrinks too rapidly, the spray foam can debond from the structure, causing a crack to form and violating the integrity of the air barrier, which can end up depositing moisture on the underside of the sheathing. This problem is a bigger deal in cold climates, but it's still a risk that must be considered. So what if you want to vent a vaulted ceiling assembly? A lot of the same rules apply. You still need the ceiling plane to be completely airtight and vapor controlled. This can be accomplished in a number of ways, but the most successful strategies utilize either a taped smart vapor retarder installed at the ceiling level in combination with a service cavity to reduce penetrations in the air barrier, or with taped rigid foam insulation installed on the underside of the rafters. Both of these strategies work, but can present challenges in terms of attachment, air barrier continuity, and workmanship. Additionally, a 2 inch air gap should be maintained to ensure ventilation from the soffits up to the ridge, which has an impact on insulation depth and R value of the roof assembly. 
Sometimes this means upsizing the structure at this location to accommodate the code minimum insulation levels, especially in those colder climates. For more information on roof assemblies and building science, head over to siri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics, including vented and unvented roofs, flat roofs, existing building retrofits, air sealing strategies, and much more. Links to those will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.